we give you praise, Jesus. Put your hands together. It's worthy of a praise. Amen. Lift your voice and say 
Ana me yegi ekele Ume mai Ume mai I worship you Ana me yegi ekele Ume mai Ume mai
Amen. One of the great blessings we have is that it rained yesterday. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. I was out biking and it started raining and it's so big. I was far away somewhere and I wanted to say pray. I say no, I'm not going to pray for this rain to stop. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We've been waiting for rain so much and then the Lord brought it and the temperature is a lot better. Amen. Unfortunately, if you are in the auditorium this morning, you can hear some, or I feel, uh, smell something a little odious. It's because of the rain. I think it soaked some part of the building. Uh, so you might, it's not usually like that. We try to spray something for it to smell better. But uh, bear with us. It's part of the blessing of the rain. Amen? Amen? We give God the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together here this morning, Lord. We appreciate you, eternal God. Receive all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Oh, to God unchanging hand. Oh, to God unchanging hand, you look upon things at all. Hallelujah, oh, to God unchanging hand. You, your hope on this and time, brethren, oh, to God unchanging hand. One more time, everybody say, I say, oh. God unchanging hand. 
Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is speaking to somebody here this morning already. Hold on to my unchanging hand. Hold on to the Lord. Do not despair. Do not give up. Do not feel that it is over. The Lord is still on the throne. He's saying to you, I am still on the throne. I control all things. I call all things to be. My word is here and amen to you. Hold on to my hand. My hand is unchanging. Therefore, I encourage you, as the Lord speaks to your heart this morning, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. Praise him. God bless you. God bless you. Go on and sit down. Amen. Hallelujah. You are all welcome again this morning. The Lord is good and the Lord is faithful. Amen. Already is encouraging you this morning to hold on to my hand, the Lord says. Many at times it becomes so overwhelming. Many at times it seems like you're almost thinking the waters of life is just up here. And at times you look to the left or to the right and you don't know where to turn to. And then the enemy comes in the dead of the night, in the midnight or early morning or whatever, and whisper to your ear, it is over. It is not over in Jesus' name. Amen? Because the person, he who you are trusting, he is Lord God Almighty. Amen? Hold on to his hand. Though the storms of life will build up, though it seems like the billows of life will swallow you, though it seems that the Lord has allowed reproach to come to your door, and you say, where shall I turn to? Look unto the Lord, amen? His hand is unchanging, and he is faithful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, by the grace of God, we are going to speak on the value of things of eternal value. Things of eternal value. Amen? Amen? amen. Hallelujah. I am here to... Um, <clears throat> Encourage us, those of us who are serving God, who have put our trust in the Lord, to remember that we should focus our attention, put our attention directly, uncompromising, on things of eternal value. Everything has value. The clothes you are wearing has value. This place we are, everything has some kind of value placed on it. But some of those values are temporal. There is things internal. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
And let me also warn us that while we are focusing and making a priority things of eternal to place our value first and foremost, we are not to negate temporal things. There is also value in temporal things. That means things of the world. Because I've seen many Christians make a tragic mistake. They focus entirely on the spiritual, and at times they forget that we are still living in the world. Though the Bible encourages us to live as if we are not living in this world, but at the same time they are saying things of this life that can help you to build on things and turn out. And without those things, you may find it hard to make it happen. And many, many great men of God and women of God has made that mistake, and I've read some, I've seen some, because they are sincere in their heart, later on say, it is a mistake, we acted without wisdom. We neglected things of happiness, which we may call the world, which some people may call Kana. We neglected things of health. We neglected things of even wealth to plan for yourself, for your family, and how to build even on this kind of, what we may call kind of things, or people interpret as kind of things. And we sweep it down and overlook it, and we focus entirely at times on spiritual things, and later on we start blaming others, and we start saying to others they have misguided us. I met such a person, in fact somebody was in my house yesterday talking about the same thing. And such a person was okay in the 80s or whatever. I wanted to go to school to be a medical doctor. And then the pastor preached about the kingdom of God coming. And so I decided, okay, what is the point in going to school and becoming a medical doctor? And so I concentrated on this. I said, do not blame the pastor, blame yourself. He said, 20 years later, the Lord hasn't come. I said, did he give you the date or time or whatever? No. The Bible says, stay what? Occupied till I come. Bible did not discourage us from seeking things temporal. He says, do not make them priority. Do not love them. Do not put your love on things of this world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So some people, okay, in terms of happiness, they are men of God. They are women of God. And because they are so much in and trial committed in their own opinion to spiritual and eternal stuff, they forget that there's an element of happiness that should exist in the family. I've known some sisters say, I don't even see my husband. All the years I raised the children all by myself because my husband is out, all brother, this and that, preaching or traveling the whole world, and they neglected some of these things. And he came back to buy them in some cases because they are not there for their family. Some don't even care, maybe, okay, let's take time out, me and my wife or my family, to go and relax, enjoy ourselves, or go on vacation, or do things that family does. Everything is just spiritual. Now, some of them, in terms of their health, they preach from morning till night, putting the zeal of the Lord. In fact, the zeal of the Lord has consumed them, somebody said to me. And so that is all good, nothing bad in it. But there has to be a balance. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They say the zeal of the Lord, I'm preaching day and night. They forget their health. They do not get rest. They do not take time to relax. They do not take time to do things just to even cry Jesus. The Lord God Almighty, he one time called the disciples and said, let us go apart. Amen? Let us go apart and relax and do something else. Okay? And they did that and get refreshed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Though they followed him. And in terms of wealth, some people have no plan. They did not make plan. Though that is maybe 20 years, 30 years ago. These days, things are more like people are making too much plan for canal, material things, too much wealth. The scripture is now a place to make money. The church auditorium has become like a a place of converting dollars or money and stuff by any means necessary. And that is ungodly. Now, God has warned us on these things. 
Let us build our hope on things eternal. And I'm also telling you this morning, as you are building it, do not disregard. Do not forget the other things in this life. Only make sure you do it according to the word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do not overdo it. Do not disregard it because many have regretted that. Unless you are among the few, which I say among the few, uh, like the case of Elijah or the Levites of the Bible, where they are commanded not to walk or do anything, and so they practically have to, uh, the Levites have to wait, the 11 tribes now bring tithes and offering for them to live off those things. Or in the case of Elijah, he's so dedicated for a portion of his time that God have to command the ravens to come and feed him, and at times send him to the widow's house for feeding, and times bring in a surplus, in some cases in the Bible, where it practically rain manna from heaven to feed those who cannot produce anything. So let us balance things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But today we are talking of things of eternal value. That is, eternal is in the realms of God, when we have left this world, what do you have? If, per se, there is a bank in heaven, let's just use a bank. What have you put in the heavenly bank that will be there for you when you go to meet Jesus Christ? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mind you, you will meet Christ. But unfortunately, many will meet Christ practically empty-handed. Of course, we came to church, we gave our life to Christ. We served God for our 90 years or 80 years or 70 years of our time. But we have not looked seriously on how to build on things of eternal value. That is things that is beyond this world. It is true that what we do in this life will echo in eternity. This is the time to build not just on temporal things, on your wealth, on your health, on your happiness, or fine houses, or fine cars, and getting the best of all things, is also to make accommodation for eternity. And how many of us have actually gotten involved? How many of us have done that or continue to do that? When you go to cash in your check, will it be bouncing in heaven? Like there is nothing for you, sister, so. There is nothing here you have sown for eternity. This morning we want to discuss on that a bit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And for those of us who might be saying, um, well, we are doing it because we are also trying to do the temporal things, the material things. Solomon have a good advice for us because some people put too much energy, too much of their time on things internal, which uh, things uh, carnal, things material, things of this world. And these things are fleeting, passing away, pass away. They are unstable. They are transient by the base of description. They do not last. So Solomon also tried both ways. He tried the spiritual and also made experiments on the material things of this world. He said, I gathered wealth. I built myself mansions. He overdid it. Well, anybody who have 1,000 wives, may God help that person. <laughs> I don't think God even can. He couldn't be helped by God. So he overdid it. He did all these things. He got money. He got wealth. He got man, women, and everything. He said, whatever my heart desired, I do not know who withhold it from myself. He fulfilled all of them. But at the end of the day, having experimented all of them, he came to the conclusion and said, that all is what? 
vanity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You say vanity of vanity. All is vanity. What is vanity? Vanity is like trying to catch the wind. You are trying to grasp the wind. You are trying to hold on to the wind or the air, which you cannot do. You are grasping the air, you are holding on to it. That is vanity. It's not doable. Those things are just fleeting. They are unstable. They are temporal. They do not last. When God called us, each and every one of us, he called us into seeking the kingdom of God. First and foremost, blessed be the name of the Lord. So now let's go back to the scriptures and start teaching on this issue a little this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 21. What does he say here? Lay not up for yourself treasures upon what? The earth. Where moth and lust doth corrupt. And where thieves does what break through and steal. Go to 20. But lay up for yourself treasures in where? Heaven. Heaven bound. Where neither moth or lust doth corrupt. And neither thieves do, break, do not break through nor steal. 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So some of us are not putting that effort on things internal. Some of us are more into the canal or material things. He said there are two parts to this. That this treasure, two type of treasure, the one that you put in heaven, thief does not steal it, it does not rust away, it does not disappear, it is not unstable, it is not transitory in nature, it is not fleeting, it endures. And then he says, on the one that we put most of our time, most of many people in the world today put more time, more effort. On how do we meet the need of the day? As I said in the beginning, it's necessary you have to balance this. The word of God specifically told us that we have to put God things first. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, please. Matthew 6, 33. Hurry up, please. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. Make it a priority. And then his righteousness also. And then God, in his mercy, will give you grace, health, the way we die, and this other thing shall be added unto you. Please do not think that God will dump it into your house. Do not think that it will flow down from heaven. On few instances, that may be the case. But in most cases, you have to believe God for it. You have to work for it. I mean, on the other thing that he said, and all these other things shall be added unto you. I've seen some people mispresent that. They say, we don't have to do anything. I don't have to work. I do not have to make effort. After all, I'm doing the things of God. He's going to supply all my need. Yes, he's able to supply your need. But you also have to do your part. For faith without work is what? dead on arrival. The faith part, you and God will decide that. The work part, you have to do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 So now we see that the Bible is trying to tell us to put our priority on things of heaven. Things that matters at the end of the day. In my land of work and as a minister, I've been opportune to stay by people who I'm about to go meet their makers, who at the last minute is about to face eternity. And many of them, none of them has ever worried about this or that. It's about what is there for me to meet? What am I going to? What am I going to face? 
now we should think about that now that God gave us health and strength. About how have we built our treasures in heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So in Colossians 3, 2, he told us this thing. Say, set your affections on things above. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Colossians 3, 2. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of this earth. Do not fall in love with things of this world. The flashing things you see on TV, the people that claim they have made it, it's all good. Still work, believe God, work for it, get your own portion, live good, live happy. But set your affection first and foremost on things above. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you set your affection on things above, that will be a guiding principle. That will be your goal, your motivation on daily basis. That will be what will give you grace to pursue when you set your affection. Now, what is these things we are going to come to that? When you set your affection on things above. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the Bible talk of foundation that has been laid. The certain foundation has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. And he said, no other foundation can any man lay again. That will be on <clears throat> First uh, Corinthians, I believe, chapter 3, 12. Can you check that? First Corinthians 3, 12. He said, now, if any man build upon this foundation, assuming you are setting your goal on things above, Assuming you are setting your foresight or you have set your foresight on things internal. Now, people seem to have been building in different ways in our time. And Bible starts to speak about this. If any man build on this foundation that is already been put together and laid down, which is Christ Jesus, the word of God, they may build on gold with gold, they may build with silver, they may build with precious stones, or they may build with wood, hay, and stubble. Go to the next verse, please. The difference here is that every man's work, every preacher, every prophet, or apostle, or a layman, or a laywoman, or whatever it is in the household of faith. Whatever you have built shall be made manifest. For that day, on the day of Christ, he shall what? Declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. In other words, the Holy Spirit will find through the work of each and every one of us. Those who build them on hypocrisy, those who build them on greed of what we can get out of serving God, those who build it on pure love, genuine love for Christ, those who build it in what matters to God in life. He said, God will try every man's work. And when God has tried each and every one of us's work, we will see the one that is able to burn or the one that is able to remain. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that your work should not burn on the day of Christ. But like a gold or silver or precious stone, which items come being preferred by is the purified through fire. These things, they go through fire already. For you to get the gold you are wearing, the precious stone, there is a sieving, there is a washing, there is a purification that goes through. They are tried. They are tested. And based on the word of God, they've come out to the other side pure. So on the day of Christ, when we always stand before the throne of heaven, your work will be tested. Some of us are building on foundation with wood. 
Some of us are building on that foundation with hair. Some of us are building on that with stubbles. Things that we destroy completely when tasted by fire. Things that when you put fire under it, it will burn. Because they are not meant to endure. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So your Christianity is not just coming to church. Your Christianity does not stop addressing up nicely on Sundays to come here. You have to look beyond this life. For a day is appointed to every one of us. Either by rapture or by natural calling, God calling us through death. One way or another, we are going to face Christ one day. What have you done for Jesus? What have you put together for your wealth in heaven? Many of us were here, if in a month, we didn't work or make money we will feel depressed and troubled, rightly so, because you need these things to survive. But many of us have lived a Christian life of 10 years, or 5 years, or 1 year, and they cannot point to anything that they put away in the bank of heaven. They take God for granted. You will make it. But while some will get better things, you may not get anything. Many of us take this Christianity as just a, a, a club. A society of friendship come together and rejoice and go home. That is not the only thing God has called you to. He called you so that you can look on things above. Our sphere, our vision at times is just on the things of this world. Oh my God, how are we going to do it? More children, more beautiful things, more houses, more cars, more money in the bank, more everything. But we are not investing on what will matter at the end of the day. Let's look at the scripture on Matthew chapter 25. Verse 14. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Gone. God, please, to 15. And to unto one he gave what? Five talents. And to another he gave what? Two talents. And to another one he gave one. Talents is a means of money in those days. A talent may be what? Maybe a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand. Let's just put it in any number. And he said he gave to every man according to his several ability. And straight away took his journey. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Christ called you to salvation. He gave his life for you and for me and died on the cross. He made the initial investment for you to go to the kingdom of God. And after that, he endured us with three things. Important things he left us for a time being. These three things is that he gave us time. Your own might be 100 years. Another person might be 80. Another person might be next 50. Another some, maybe another 20. Or one day for God's sake. I don't know. But there is time apportioned to each and every one of us. That is time that you need to work to produce. And then he gave them this talent. And then he gave them the ability to turn this talent into treasure. Through the grace and the help of the Holy Spirit. 
And each one of us are to take this time and work with it to produce something. Something that is only the preacher on the pulpit that should produce. I will not share my own with my wife, neither can my wife share with me. When we stand before God, every man, every woman, every child will answer for themselves. If my crown of gold or silver or pure precious stone that day, it is by the merit of what I have done here. For your actions here will echo in eternity. So if you dress up every day and come to church, and that is the end for you, well, when you go there, you